pleasant good morning to all of you, my viewers online, and those of you who continually uh, make yourself available to participate, to view, to listen to Pastor's Corner. We are very happy to be here again to present to you our next episode of Pastor's Corner. Today, I am your host, Pastor Samora Best, and we will be discussing a very interesting topic. The topic for today's discussion, the Christian and the labor union. The Christian and the labor union. And of course, you know, normally when we have Pastor's Corner, we always have a persons in studio um, who are well capable of, you know, having those wonderful discussions in relations uh, to the various topics that we present here um, on Pastor's Corner. And to my immediate left, you know, I have a very um, good friend of mine, a colleague, a well-experienced minister. Um, he's the pastor for the Southern District of Seventh-day Adventists. Right, um, I'm speaking about none other than Pastor Jerome Gordon. Good morning to you, Pastor Gordon. How are you doing? Greet Good morning, people. Pastor Best. And it's, um, it's my delight to be here to sit and to discuss this relevant topic, this relevant subject at a time like this. We know that we need to grapple with some of the issues that have been raised relative to the labor movement. So it's my delight and I know you're going to have a wonderful journey as we continue. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Pastor Gordon. And I look forward to our discussion as well. And to my extreme left, right, um, you would have seen him many times. Um, I am starting to realize that we share pastor's corner a lot you know <laughs> a lot of the times you see me um he's there but nonetheless um i'm speaking about your humble servant um pastor enoch isaac he's the ministerial secretary within the grenada conference of seven day adventists he also pastors at the eastern two district of seven day adventists pastor enoch isaac welcome to the next episode of pastor's corner read the brethren let them know how you're doing you know, by God's grace. Thank you, Pastor Bess, and a pleasant good morning to all our listeners and viewers on Pastor's Corner. Um, already Kim John is saying good morning. So, good morning, um, Kim, and trust that yourself and all others who normally join will be at this Pastor's Corner. Relevant, timely <laughs> Pastor's Corner. Maybe a day late. Um, yesterday was Labor Day. <laughs> uh, here in Grenada and most of the Caribbean but um, but I think it's, it's still appropriate that we um, maybe in time for for the US Labor Day which is done right. right. <laughs> which is down the line um, but on this note I would like to take the opportunity to extend condolences to some of our viewers um, and and our hosts um, this morning Pastor uh, Samara Best on the passing of his aunt um, you know, a, a radio personality, well-known person, Mrs. Um, Campbell. We 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 mourn her loss. I personally knew her um, very well. <laughs> you know, um, and the family. We extend if you are viewing or listening. Maybe not today because um, today might be a tough day for you. But we extend co condolences to you and Pastor Bess, you, you rest of the family. That God will indeed be with you all. To strengthen you in this very difficult time but i'm here this morning again for another pastor's corner thank you very much uh pastor i do appreciate it and of course um i would share the condolences with the rest of the family as well and thanks to all those of you who are logged on and those who would have been wish those who would have wished condolences um thank you very much um but today as we continue with our discussion we look at we are looking at the christian and the labor movement the christian and the labor union right the christian and the labor union but before we go it is always fitting to recognize god's presence as we know god is the one who gives wisdom as we seek to discuss the different topics so at this time pastor gordon um, can you open us with a word of prayer as we seek to begin um, this discussion great father of glory pure father of light than angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. We thank you so much for the privilege we have to share with our listening and viewing audience relevant truths and uh, arguments concerning the Christian's duty relevant to labor unions. We pray you will touch 
the technology, all the devices that have been used this morning. And I pray that us in studio will be inspired and animated by your Holy Spirit, that our time together will be meaningfully spent, and that your name will be glorified, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And so we go right into our discussion for for the day for you know i would begin with pastor enoch pastor enoch um i i, I you're you're a man of you know great experience as a matter of fact um you're the one responsible within the conference um religious liberty and all of these things but we speak in labor union so this morning i want to ask you the question um pastor gordon of course you can give your your input as well um what exactly is the labor movement what exactly is the labor movement Thanks, Pastor Best, for the question. Um, you know, I think we first need to um, clarify. When you use the term labor movement, mm -hmm. you can have two, <laughs> two, um, two understanding. Mm -hmm. one, one can be referred to as the, you know, the labor union. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, in a sense, the political um, wing of it. Um, there are a number of political parties, like mm -hmm. in London, even mm -hmm. previously here, we had the GLP, um, you know, Guinea United Labour Party, you know. So, um, when it's talk about labour movement, it doesn't necessarily mean trade union. All right. yeah? yeah, it can mean the mm -hmm. political arm, of, you know, a, a, a political party, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and even when we talk about um, the trade union movement, um, you know, it. <coughs> British English refers to the trade union movement, um, trade union, sorry, movement, and, and um, you know, American English, you say the labor, mm -hmm. labor union. So, um, but they, they want the same thing, really, you know. Um, so, if you say trade union or you say labor union, they really refer to the same thing. But um, that being said, um, living on the political movement now, which is another aspect of it, when we talk about the trade union, we really talk about what we what is called organized labor, All right. where workers, of course, have decided voluntarily to group themselves together in union to fight for a number of things: better working conditions, um, um, treatment of you know a holistic thing, treatment of of employees, mm -hmm. and relation to as I said salary negotiations and right. and. And all other conditions relative to um, one's work, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's, it's really the coming together of workers um, in this grouping, calling themselves union, so that they can bag in uh, and negotiate for working conditions across the board for, for workers. In a nutshell, you okay. know, that's what we do, okay. that's what we refer to. All right, the the labor union or the the labor movement, and I agree with. Um, Pastor Enoch Isaac, who happens to be the pastor's attorney, um, <laughs> perhaps not in training, <laughs> but in function. <laughs> so um, I, I, I concur with um, Pastor Enoch in that um, the, the labor union actually is a bunch of individuals or groups that come together to, um, to s advocate for better working conditions. And in fact, Historically, if we made to take, if we should just take a quick um, um, look at the history or the historicity of um, the labor union, we, we find that it it was spawned by a certain adverse and deleterious social condition. We had um, soon after the rise of the industrial revolution, we had some wicked capitalists, mm -hmm. folks who were just chasing profits, and they had people working. Um, in subhuman conditions. They even had child laborers working in factories. People, on one occasion, they used to close the fire escapes because they didn't want the workers to slip away and take breaks. Um, they were working. There were times when, incredibly, especially in the U.S. and Britain, workers were working for 100 hours a week. There was no retirement plan. There were no health insurance benefits. Um, the conditions were serious. And if you raise your voice, if you were, going, if you were to speak, then you would be fired. Um, so there was a gap. There was inequitable. There was wage disparity. There was a need for advocacy, for somebody to dialogue with these fierce 
megalomaniacs, these capitalists who had profit as the bottom line and the only line. And so this was the context that spawned the development of unions and labor unions to advocate for better working conditions for people. And um, we can safely say, notwithstanding the adversarial ear and, and actions of some unions, that the reason for its existence was indeed laudable. All right, so thank you very much. Um, having um, heard the explanation, right, in relation to labor movement, you know, I, I, I noticed that even within our own local context, um, for those of you who wonder, and we, things like um, GUT and, and TAU and, and Public Workers Union and all those things, um, basically these are um, some of the things that um, unions that we, we are speaking about that negotiate um, certain rights and wages and so forth as pastors would have, um, would have highlighted too. Right? Um, I'm not saying that to point out anyone, I must say, but I'm just giving you some examples as to when we speak about labor union um, from our local context, we have a very good example right here um, within our island. And so as we move on, Pastor Gordon, right, um, would you say the Bible prohibits or encourages the Christians, right, the Christians' participation in such secular movements? What does the Word of God say in relation to, to those movements? Wow. Um, <clears throat> you breathe out them. <laughs> yes, because I'm in my head. I am thinking about um, the golden rule. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking about um, the biblical injunction to bear one another's burden. Mm -hmm. We are encouraged by scripture to be a voice for the voiceless. Job said that he was hands for the lame and feet and he was, he was eyes for the blind. Scripture enjoins us to speak up for those persons who are disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Scripture enjoins us not to walk on the other side, like the proverbial priest and Levite. When a Samaritan was, I mean, when, when, a, when, a, when a person was beaten up by a criminal and bleeding along the wayside, in that story, we see a certain ethic that we have a responsibility to to attend to folks who are being battered and bruised by social systems or individuals. So we are supposed to consider it our business when folks are being oppressed. Had it not been the case, we wouldn't have had a Harriet Tugman and a Rosa Parks and a Malcolm X and a, a Martin Luther King Jr. We must see the oppressed person as our brother and speak up. So while we do not believe in creating adversarial systems, but we have responsibility as Christians. So going back to the point, um, does the Bible prohibit or encourage the Christian to participate in, in secular movements? And the answer is it depends on the nature of the movements. There are some movements that are absolutely satanic and, um, and adversarial as Christians, we cannot afford to be gospel proponents and at the same time be a part of movements that, that disparage and tear down and, 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 and speak ill of our neighbors. So no, the scripture does not encourage us to participate in any movement, any secular movement that employs unbiblical tactics. So if a labor union is going to be in its core, in its essence, adversarial, then I would say the Bible would not support our participation. Just before Pastor um, Isaac gives his, um, his input, I just want to also say to our viewers online, um, your, your, your comments, they are welcome, your suggestions. Um, you can give your two pens in the, in the chat so that from time to time, if time permits us, we'll be able to highlight some of those, um, those feedback that comes from you, our viewers online. Pastor, Pastor Isaac, go right ahead. What, what says thou? Yeah, well, Pastor, of course, um, like many other things, the Bible does not have any, any passage of Scripture, any, any text, or any such statement relative to, mm -hmm. um, you know, such secular um, organizations like a, a, a labor union. But the Bible does provide principles you see and that's that's essentially the bible the, the bible is a principle book not so when the principle is read it has to be 
then apply it. Yeah. So we cannot go to the Bible for everything and, and say, oh, yes, the Bible said this or it doesn't say this. No, the Bible, will, there are some things the Bible talks about. The, um, Thou shalt not kill, you know, yeah, the Bible has a statement on that. But there are some other things the Bible may not say. But then you, you have to go and apply the principle. So um, for the Christian, we have to be guided by b biblical maxims. The Bible would mm -hmm. have that. Mm -hmm. We have to be guided. So, um, so I would say, no, the Bible doesn't prohibit or encourages, but um, Philippians 4, 8, always come to mind, finally, yeah. brethren, you know, whatever things are true and, and honest and whatever things are just and, and whatever things are, are pure and whatever things are lovely mm -hmm. and, and things of a good report, good report these yeah. are the things that we should participate in. So mm -hmm. um, a Christian then has to be guided. Okay, I'm getting to this, this is the labor union. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the contexts? What, what are the philosophy that guides that? Um, you know, and, and therefore, can I participate and be the Christian? Because mm. we, we cannot afford to be a Christian uh, or we cannot afford to join certain organization, um, have, you know, which requires us to put on our Christianity for, mm -hmm. for, for while we are members or while we have to, you know. Um, so I have to go and do a demonstration. I have to demonstrate. But based on what I'm required to do in a demonstration, I can't really be the Christian. So I have to put down my Christianity, demonstrate, and then and pick then up my Christianity. That's a problem. <laughs> like if it's a jacket. Right. So, <laughs> so no, I, I should be able to demonstrate. I'm demonstrating against drugs. I demon I'm demonstrating against um, child labor. You know, whatever it is, I can demonstrate and be a good Christian. But if I'm going to be involved and I'm going to say, you know, Pay me me money and vex with me and you know <laughs> carry. On. No, we gotta be careful with that kind of attitude, you mm -hmm. know, Pastor Bits. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, I I am looking in the chat, and um, there are person saying um, good morning, pastors. Um, for the person who raised the concern on the volume, can you tell me if you're hearing it much better now, so that um we we can have our tech team um sort it out as we continue um nicely um Pastor Pastor. Pastor Isaac, since you're there, you know, um, you start speaking about pay me my money and so forth. No, there is something within, um, uh, it's a policy, um, at the moment you begin working, um, you know, there's something called union Jews, and, 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 and they deduct union Jews from your salary and so forth. And so should, should Christians pay union Jews, right? Should Christians pay union Jews? And I have a text here. I have a text here that I want to, I want to um, to highlight, which comes from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 12, right? Reading from verse 13 and verse 17, verse 13 and verse 17, right? And it says, and they sent Mark chapter 12, right? Um, verse 13 to 17, sorry. And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Right? Um, shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing the hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring ye me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it, and he said unto them, Whose is the image and subscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar, and to God the things that are God's. God's. And they marveled at him. What says thou, Pastor? So the uh, question be, be, before Pastor speaks, I just want to ask my tech team, to take a look at it, um, Pastor will be speaking. They said that uh, okay, they are not hearing still. So okay, all right, wonderful. Um, yeah, um, should should Christians pay Union Jews? Well, <laughs> Pastor, if I'm not, uh, as far as I know, this is automatic. Mm -hmm. If you're part of the union, mm -hmm. because you are not, um, I think a vote is normally taken. If you are, if you work at an establishment. Um, you and they come to do us a survey as to how many workers would like to join. I think the majority goes, and once that union wins that vote, then you know that's how it, that's how it is done. And so, if you're part of the the union 
um, then I think juice is automatic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not 100% sure mm -hmm. that someone can opt out. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not sure. It's, I, mm -hmm. I suppose it's a legal matter. But I'm not sure someone can say, okay, um, I don't want to pay Jews, but when you um, advocate for whatever else I'll benefit, I'm not sure that that is, that is something that is practical. Um, so I would say, if you're part of the organization, you, in fact, I think I probably should say, I think it'll be unethical, even immoral, mm -hmm. to want to be a part and not wanting to pay mm. Jews. If you understand something, if you do not want to be a part, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure you can want to be a part and still at the same time saying, I, I don't want to pay Jews. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, that, that's my thing. Uh, so render, and based on the text, render to Caesar um, the things that are Caesar. I, I think workers can say, okay, I think the Jews are too high. We can. We can, you know, we can ne negotiate maybe a lower Jews um, because the administration of the union will come up with it. Yeah. The um, the 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 rates. So, um, but I I'm not sure that someone uh, can want to be a member or should want to be a member and not wanting to pay Jews. That's just my view. I think it goes it goes together. If okay. you want to be a member, you should want to pay Jews. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I I agree. I don't see in what way a worker could want to be a part of a union without wanting to comply with the conditions. If you want to be a part of the union, that involves your signing a membership card or whatever else is the entry requirement or the membership requirement, which um, inexorably involves you paying dues. So it seems to me that perhaps what the question is, is, is seeking to bring out is that should I pay dues if I am a part of a, an organization that has um, agreed that the, the majority of the members or the workers, the employees, have agreed to have a particular union on board. But I don't want to be a part of that union. Must I be taxed, so to speak? Must I be made to pay dues if I do not want to be a part of the union, simply because that was a decision of the majority? Mm. And I think um, this, the, the answer to this would vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction because I think in some places it is, you are mandated to pay dues as long as the union is the one that is voted by the majority to represent the workers in that particular company. In that case, you may not have a choice. But if you, for philosophical or religious reasons, you do not want to be a part of it and dues are being taken, should that happen? And I would say... No, that would be wrong. If I don't want to be a part of the union, I don't care what benefits you're negotiating. If for philosophical or religious reasons I want to opt out, then you dare not take dues from my salary without my consent. And that's something for which um, I think your attorney should have a prosecutorial interest in the matter in ensuring that your rights are not being abused. If you do not want to be a part of it, you should not be made to pay dues. Okay. All right. <laughs> very interesting take there. You know, very, very interesting um, take. But as we continue, um, Pastor Gordon, you are, you are there, so I'll just continue with you. Um, what role, if any, right, should the Christian play in such a movement? Uh, should they advocate for higher wages? Well, you know... Christians are, are, by definition, followers of Christ. And I, I, I can still imagine what must have been the expressions on the faces of those persons listening to Jesus as he made his, his discourse in, recorded in Matthew 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, actors, because you do X and Y and Z. If you were to distill from that speech the principles that Jesus was enunciating, you would see justice standing out. Mm -hmm. You rob widows. You, 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 you tried your best to circumvent the temple tax and stuff. So Jesus is someone who believes in the fight for justice mm -hmm. and lifting up the downtrodden. Right? We see that coming out. In fact, Jesus hung out with those who were on the periphery of society, the mm -hmm. tax collectors and the fishermen, those persons who were not a part of the mainstream, those who were neglected by the, the popular theological narratives of the intelligentsia of the day. Jesus advocated and hung out with those, with those people. So if I'm a follower of Christ, it is my duty 
to advocate for justice wherever injustice is seen. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, um, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. All right. So we would need to advocate. But when it comes to advocating for, for wages, we have to be very careful because we are Christians. So we have to be fair. You can't be advocating for higher wages for a bunch of lazy workers who show up for work late most of the times and sit in the office on, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and will not do their work, you know? We, we have to be fair not just to the employee, but to the employer. And um, we must not advocate for, for, for wages, higher wages for persons who are not productive. But for those who are productive, for those who are consistent and faithful and dexterous and nimble and hardworking, and yet they are being they are being they are being oppressed and there is serious wage disparity, I think that it is our duty in a respectful way to advocate for wages for the hard working people. Okay. Pastor Isaac. Um they they Respond to the question, you know, um, what role, if any, should we play? The Seventh Adventist Church, to begin with, um, has traditionally discouraged its members from taking membership in unions. Mm -hmm. um, notice I said discourage, but um, they have left that solely to the person themselves, mm -hmm. meaning obviously no mandate. Yeah. They've just discouraged. Um, notwithstanding, the church has recognized what. Um, the good that unions can provide and has provided for workers. Mm -hmm. um, but there are two things which the church has been concerned about, which is one, the loss of, the loss of what is called the loss of free will. Sometimes a union wants to take a decision, Pastor. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, they, they almost, they have a thousand members and they want 100%. Corporation. They say the striking. That worker might figure no, that no, I don't think it's I don't think we have um we have exhausted all other avenues. I don't think we I think we're rushing to strike. Mm -hmm. Um and they're saying no, we shouldn't. Now th these workers are made to be number one, some sometimes they are threatened, they are they are belittled, they are made to feel um that they are against unity. You know, so unionism um you know, re really functions at the height when persons give up their free will. Yeah. It's like, you know, they operate like buffaloes. We're moving in a pack. We're moving like a herd. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what we'll do, right? Um, so, so that is something the church has been very mindful of, and that is something I'm concerned about, this strong arm tactic to, to get what you want. Yeah. We want everyone on board. And very often, I must say, Notwithstanding what was said by Pastor um, Gordon, and, and sometimes even today, even today, employers, be it government or private entities, sometimes you 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 know um, they wouldn't willingly, voluntarily give a raise or, or, or some condition. You always have to fight for it. So I'm saying that there are times when that is needed. Um, however, lots of times, union leaders, I'm not even sure they're, they're really concerned, Pastor Bess, about the workers. I think a lot of time they're concerned about themselves. Mm -hmm. How they look, mm. how they are perceived. When I say look, how they are perceived. Mm -hmm. Yes, not necessarily fighting for um, for persons. So, mm -hmm. so if it is I'm a part of a union, and I'm seeing that your role or your 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 motive is to is really to appear good in the eyes of the public. I'm not on you on that. No, I'm not on you on that mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. So the Christian must be separate. The Christian cannot function in this hard mentality. Salvation is an individual matter. Mm -hmm. and, and therefore, that's how the Christian should function. We are, yes, we are united um, in matters that where unity is called for. But if there is something um, that I think my conscience wouldn't allow me to participate in, I don't think I should um, support you know, all methods. So I may want to support this method. Because that method is Christian. But the next method would be unchristian. Mm -hmm. But because of how union function, it means that once we're going this way, everybody, everybody has, has to go that way. that way. And no, I don't support it. I support individual things. Okay, that, that, that one is good. That's fine. I can, I can participate in that. But that other uh, um, measure you're taking, I think, is unchristian. It doesn't go along with my conscience. And therefore, I, I would not want to go along with that. And that is a problem for union. Because union like the function. We're together in this matter. 
any anything we say we're doing, we want everybody on board. I thank and, you and, very and much. And may I, may I add, ahead. sometimes, as Christians, we have to stand up against the unions because there may be times when the union feel that a particular methodology of protest, picketing, um, strike, is justified. But their, their rationale is not biblical. Because some of these labor unions have political ambitions, are, are political connections. And they may, w especially if they're advocating again for public sector workers, and they may want to make a particular government look bad. Mm -hmm. They may employ strategies that are, that are subversive and that are, that are conspiratorial in, in that they, they, they seek to do stuff that is untoward and not, not, mm -hmm. not on the table, but below the table stuff. They, they want to hit the government below the belt. Christians must be careful. As Pastor Enoch said earlier, you don't wear your Christianity like a garment and, and, and that becomes only situationally relevant. But we are Christians all the time. We are always representing Jesus. So there, there must be some things that as Christians you cannot support um, that the union may want you to just jump on and show a spirit of esprit de corps and unity. No, you have to stand up and say, nah, I'm not a part of that. All right, all right. Now I have a question. I have... Um to follow up, I have four um, Bible texts. I would read two, I, Pastor Gordon, I would read one to you, you would answer Pastor Enoch, and so on, right? So you'd each give your comment on the one that I have assigned um, to you. So Pastor Gordon, all right, I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 24, right? Deuteronomy chapter 24 and verse 14. Can you just give uh, some comments on that text? Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 24, sorry, and verse 14 says, Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in thy land within thy gates. Just give some thoughts on that one. Yes. And, um, uh, this, even though this was said within the context of Israel's theocracy, yet the principle is, is universal and can be applied in all circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, here it was being told that there must be equitable there must be equity rather there must be an equitable distribution of wages and it doesn't doesn't matter if the person it belongs to your race or your social group or class it doesn't matter whether it's a stranger or a, a native that there must be um equality there must be um this fairness and so if you notice the the, the language of the text do not oppress and it means, therefore, that if there is any form of oppression as Christians, we must give some spirit-led, sanctified advocacy against it. All right, Pastor, I just want um, yeah, there, there is a follow-up passage. Can you read verse 15 uh, um, oh, of that okay. same? Verse 15. Yeah. So yes. to, right, let me just read verse 15. I think right? you know, that, that carries some information, too, relative to, to that. Right, verse 15 so. says, at, at his day, thou shalt give him his hire. Neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and sit and setteth his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. Yeah, I I just want to comment on that. Of course, um, that's de referring to first of all the principles, um, daily paid workers. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and um, but by extension, even if you are fortnightly paid or monthly paid, the idea here, the principle is that. When the day that is set for payment, that day must be honored. Yeah. See, so if I'm an employer, that is a passage I have to look at. Yeah? So if it's monthly, if it's the 25th or the 27th or the 29th, unless there is extenuating circumstances, things really happen. But generally speaking, that's the day. And if, you, if the day comes and, and you said nothing and the worker up in arms, then you can't turn around and want to blame the worker because the, the Bible is saying, this principle was followed. Well, it, 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 it becomes worse, or I mean, even, <clears throat> even more circumstantial, I should say, when it comes to a daily paid worker. Because the Bible says that person is poor, and not to give him the money um, when he's poor and he needs it. The Bible says the Lord will contend for him. Yeah, and you know, when the Lord is contending for you, you know you have, and it says, so the Lord is saying, be careful how we treat 
workers, employers, be careful how you treat workers, especially the very, uh, what we call daily pay, the lower class of workers, because they need, the need is great. It's like, you know, you talk about hand to mouth, mm -hmm. you know, the need is great. I get it, I spend it. And, and those persons, we should not, um, well, I shouldn't say those persons because the principle here is that whatever date is set for payment. So if I say I'll pay you at the end of the day, I must pay you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. if, I pay, if I say I'll pay you at the end of the um, the fortnight, I'll pay. I should do that. If I say I pay you at the end of the month, at that particular time, I should honor that. Except things, some straight something happened. You know, you know, um, there is a shutdown with with all bank, the banking system shut down and it's a nationwide something we know hurricane something you know some disaster but in the normal flow of thing an employer has to work every day every hour to ensure that relative to payment it, it is done at the appointed time and, and, and oh ahead. i would want to add that not only should the payment be timely but the payment must be adequate because sometimes you look at the company's balance sheet and they're raking in big profits but because they have decided to pay, um, let's say, $100, and the inflation has eaten out the spending power of that $100 in the last year or two, and you have had profits that cushion the inflation, not only should you pay timely, as Pastor Enoch said, but you must pay adequately. All right. So um, I am looking at my time, and I realize um, the time is going um, pretty fast. So... What I'll do, I would allow us to have a short break at this moment, right, um, where we can think back on all that was said uh, thus far, and then we would continue after the break. So at this moment, we'd have a short um, break in the program, and then when we come back, we would continue uh, with the discussion. The song says, I'm not about to quit. Don't give up. Don't give in, hang on. I've heard of a man in a far distant land who wrestled with an angel all night. He prayed and he prayed, he stayed and he stayed. He put up a mighty big fight. Oh, the angels pulled away. Oh, Jacob did say, as dawn was breaking that day. Oh, my patience, you're testing, but I want my blessing. I'm not about, I'm not about to quit. Who for 30 long days? Nobody could pray to Daniel. This message was sent. Oh, you'll be the feast for some hungry beast down in that old lion's den. Oh, Lord, but early next morning, the king was moaning. He said, Daniel, friend, how is it? Oh, King, live forever. Our God and deliver. You see, I'm not about, I'm not about to quit. Oh, Lord, I'm not about to quit. I'm going to make it, make it all the way. Oh, Lord, I'm not about to quit. I need to see Jesus, Jesus, sweet, sweet face. Oh, Lord, I face stumble down, and I feel so unworthy. Sometimes I feel so unfit. Oh, there's one thing about it. And Lord, I'm gonna shout it. You see, I'm not about, I'm not about to quit. If you're not about to quit, just type amen in the chat. Because God always shows up on time, just when we least expect him. Mm, this battle I 
fight Sometimes it seems so hard It seems like I surely will fall And those mountains have climbed They press in my mind When I see, I see just how tall Oh, the rivers are too wide And those valleys, they're low As low as it seems I will get Oh, but I will come out With a victory shout you see, I'm not about, I'm not about to quit. Oh, Lord, I'm not about to quit. I'm going to make it, make it all the way. Oh, Lord, I'm not about to quit. I need to see Jesus, Jesus, sweet, sweet faith. Sometimes I feel so unfit Oh, there's one thing about it And Lord, I'm gonna shout it You see, I'm not about, I'm not about to quit I'm not about to quit I'm gonna make it, make it all I thank you very much. I must express heartfelt thanks to Sister Natalie for Sister Drakes for um, blessing us with that item of special music. I also thank all of our viewers for staying online. There are many submissions in the comment section. But Pastor Enoch, I just want to direct one specifically to you. Um, the question is, what if, that's coming from the comment section, what if you were left off unfairly and the union does not fight for you? What does the church have in place to help that person pastor enoch well pastor you know the, the truth is and this is not say um not my response is not um should not be taken as a you know in a simplistic way really we should we should allow jesus to fight for us mm -hmm. um you know because as i said sometimes the union are there and certain things certain persons they make no issue of it because sometimes they go for the politics so according to what the issue, then it's going to make news and that, and you know, then they, they put, um, put forth all their efforts, the best efforts. And other, other times they don't, um, but that person's going to try this. The sad thing here is that um, you can take a lawyer, but sometimes, again, you, you already don't have, and then to go and ask a lawyer to fight your case with the union, um, I mean, you, you can't afford it. But of course, the church is a charitable organization. Mm -hmm. So if someone needs a help and the church can help we help mm -hmm. i mean that uh, so I, i'm making no bones about this uh, or um i'm not suggesting that anytime someone have it's like you, you ask a question um can you assist with that and if the church has it, it would help but I, i'm not saying here that whenever you don't have you come to the church but if the church you ask a question the bible the bible says knock ask and it shall be given to you knock and it shall be open to you so if you request help and the church can help the church will help. And that happens all of the time. Of course, if the church cannot help, the, the church is not in a position to help. The church just can't help. Um, you know, I just want to make, say one other thing, Pastor. You, you raised that, but there are a number of comments there that was raised. Um, I just want to advise persons, you know, if you're going to put something in the chat that you know about, please do it. If, you, if you're not sure about it, don't do that. Because someone is asking about the church trying to hire part-time workers. I'm responding to it because I don't like mm -hmm. um stuff that is not true to avoid paying health insurance i'm not sure where that come from um you know mm -hmm. i work with a church um here in the conference and i don't know you hire part-time workers to avoid <laughs> you yeah. know there is a category you you could be temporarily um employed or you could be part-time employed yeah. because of the nature of what, what you're doing um but that doesn't mean the the reason you are part-time because the church don't know all there is a i mean if you're a full-time worker there are some agreements and there are some benefits that goes along with that 
Um, and in fact, some of them, the workers still have to decide they want to. Yes. Yeah, if, yes. even certain insurance. So yes. um, you are full-time, but the worker still has to make a decision. Do I want to? Yes. And if you want to, then the, 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 the deduction, deduction is made yeah. on your behalf. And if you don't want to, then that's still up to you, even if you're, um, you're, you're, you're full-time. I thought I wanted to say that because sometimes folks post. I know you can't always respond to everything, but I just wanted to comment on that. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, um, Pastor, for responding. Now, I have a, a few passages, excerpts from um, the se statements from the Seventh-day Adventist um, church, you know, that the church would have issued. I may not be able to read all, but I would read some. I would direct um, directly to Pastor Gordon, some directly to um, Pastor Isaac. So the first one I would direct it, I would direct it since Pastor Isaac is already on, on the floor, um, I would direct it directly to you, Pastor Isaac. Um, I want you to just um, share your thoughts on it. The, work, the workplace environment should be characterized by an atmosphere of mutual service and mutual respect. Adversarial relationships between employer and employee, born of subs um, subsistence, self-interest and rivalry deny dignity to persons and ignore the larger interests and needs of society can you just give your thoughts on on that statement yeah this is one of the um, this is one of the statements issued by the seventh Adventist church mm -hmm. relative to um the workplace environment and 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 and, and things of that nature um as the statement indicates that the environment in a workplace should be characterized by mutual service and mutual respect. Pastor Gordon um, made allusion to that. Um, and some folks don't like to hear that. They're not happy with it. But they come to the people's work. Especially, um, well, I mean, office persons. You sit there and, and you're on YouTube and you're on every other social media site. You're not doing the people's work. But the union step in and say tomorrow we're wearing a half day and we're wearing amban and we're wearing t shirts and, we, and these are the first people to jump in. To jump in. Mm. They are not doing the people's work. Mm. But they are forced to be advocating and mm. wearing red armbands and all kinds of stuff. So the church is saying the workplace should have mutual respect. The employer should be respecting the, the worker. And if there is something, um, for example, you work in AC and the air condition, the quality of the air is you know um is not healthy and the worker complain you can't ignore that yes correct. no you can't ignore that because they're human beings mm -hmm. you can't ignore it you have to do whatever it takes um because you want the worker to work in that that mm -hmm. that area so mutual respect so i create the environment make sure that there's no harm to a workers there um any any material anything that could harm a worker uh, at the same time the worker understanding that then has to give out the best because ultimately past the best we are mm -hmm. accountable to god not to the employer. Ultimately, we are accountable to God. Amen. So, um, so that's, that's the kind of relationship that should exist. It's not adversarial. You have an employer. Um, there should be mutual respect. Yeah. But um, I'm saying some persons um, instigated by some ungodly, selfish union leaders, they're always up in arms. Mm -hmm. You know, there is no issue, but there's still, a, there's still an issue. Because it's, it's as though that's the way it has to be. If you know what I'm saying. It's mm -hmm. like an opposition party. Um, just opposing everything by just being named opposition is the same kind of thing. No, an opposition should oppose when, when there is time to oppose. Yeah. But if there's a proper matter that needs support, the opposition should support it. Yeah. But I'm saying there are some union leaders, that's the way they function, and therefore the workers function that way. When there is nothing to talk about, they're still up in arms mm. because that's the, the energy that have been exerted um, within the workforce. All right. Pastor Gordon, this is your statement. The workplace should not be dehumanized, but should not, sorry, dehumanize people. Employees should have access to a process of consultation and genuine discussion in matters affecting their labor and the conduct of the business or industry that employs their talent and skills. Can you give some thoughts on that? Yes, that's a, a very um, relevant statement. Um, I like... I like how it's written in the subjunctive. Mm -hmm. The workplace should not, mm -hmm. should not dehumanize people. And, and this is especially relevant now in that we see policies that have been designed for the preservation of the institution, which oftentimes can be inimical to the interest of the worker. Mm -hmm. 
bearing in mind that if you take the worker out, the institution is likely to crash yeah. because it is the worker that produces the labor that keeps the profits coming in and hence the, the life of the institution has a, has a serious, well, I should say, a there's a causal relationship. There, it, it, there's a quid pro quo relationship. If you, if you don't take care of the worker, uh, in pastoral circles, in another time, in another place, it would say you can't ask people to rescue the perishing and then perish the rescuers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you, you can't do that at all. <laughs> so you can't dehumanize people. Employers should have, employees should have access to a post of consultation and genuine discussion. So your policies ought to create an open door, a kind of freedom of expression where if I don't like how certain benefits are, are being calculated if I don't like uh, how the workplace is structured because I think it is inimical to my interest, to my health, to my future, I think that there should be this openness, this genuine openness to facilitate um, um, a, 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 a wonderful and meaningful non-adversarial discussion. So wherever it is not the case, it must be addressed and I fully endorse the statement. All right, thank you very much. So we come in close, we come in home now, Pastor. Pastor Isaac, that is, right? Seventh-day Adventist employers should support and demonstrate liberty of conscience, fair wages, and, work, and working conditions, equality of opportunity, justice, and fairness for all. Pastor, without, without um, going around this, I, I support this 100%. Um, mm -hmm. Now, the church, the Seventh-day Church is an employer. So it's not just talking about... People um, who own businesses. Who are Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm beginning with the church. Yeah, that, the church as an employer yeah. has to, has to um, show that it respects, um, you know, the, 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 the personhood of, of workers yeah. in, in that fair wages. Now, the thing is with wages, <laughs> I'm not sure... Pastor Bess, I mean, we, we, we all here work for the church. I'm not mm -hmm. sure we, we will ever be satisfied or happy mm -hmm. with whatever the wages the church decide. No? Um, because, you know, we, we always find there, there are always things to purchase and there's always things to get done. So, um, but there has to be some degree of contentment, mm -hmm. if you know what I'm saying. Because, mm -hmm. you know, but, but it doesn't mean that that you can you can set a wages a certain way and 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 a next and a worker will figure that's too small. So, but I, th I don't think that's the issue. Um, relative to the inflation rate, re re relative to um, the economic condition in a particular place, all of this has to be taken in, in, into consideration. And fair wages must be applied. You know, in that you know because context determines meaning, mm -hmm. right? So I think the church, as uh, a whole, and 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 must ensure that justice and equality when it comes to um, Workers, no group of workers you treat in that way, and other groups you treat mm -hmm. a different way. Um, you know, and I, I cannot say the church doesn't have, you know, doesn't need improvement in that way. I think there's always room for improvement, but um, but I think the church, as a, as an as an employer, I think the church um, tries relative to the constraints that the church have, and 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 um, when it could do better, the church should do better. Correct. And in relation to other seven Adventist employers. Um, no, that that's very important. You you don't want to. That's your weakness. Yeah. Your weakness. You 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 cannot um, treat people badly and then just appear in church um, after having treated people badly relative to wage, relative to working conditions. Um, you know, and disparity disparity in, in 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 wages, male and female, and that kind of thing. I mean, you have to be you have to be fair in dealing with persons because that essentially is your testament. You know, of your Christianity. Your Christianity is not appearing to a worship service. Your Christianity and my Christianity is how we live and how we interact and how we deal with people Correct. on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Pastor Gordon, right? Um, Christians should refrain from violence or any method incompatible with Christian ideals as instruments in the attainment of social or economic goals. Nor should Christians lend their support to organizations or employers that resort to such actions? Pastor God. Yes, indeed. Um, 
it, it shows that um, whatever we do, in whatever context we find ourselves, um, we are supposed to remember that our first duty is to be like Christ. Our, our first calling is to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And therefore, when violence, and, and by the way, within the context of our discussion, there has been some, some corrupt union leaders, perhaps not in, in, in the country here. I'm speaking internationally. There have been some corrupt union leaders who have organized some nefarious activities and some picketing and some, you know, we have seen some real crazy things happen on the international stage to the extent that when we look at the membership in labor unions from the 1950s to now, um, the reduction is remarkable. Today, just, it's just about 6% of the working um, population across many states that are involved in unions that are members of unions, which if you look like 50 years ago, you know, it was a lot more. There is a decline in the membership of labor unions now. Perhaps one of the reasons is that people want to take their own matters in their own hands and people are not in agreement with the violence and the coercive methods um, that are oftentimes employed by union leaders. Some of them have their own private agendas. So my point is, yes, as Christians, we cannot lend our support to organizations that employ these unchristian, these unbiblical techniques. Yes, we ought to have collective bargaining. A union representative or the, 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 the union directorate must be able to sit with management and in a non-threatening, non-condemnatory, um, peaceful way, negotiate for proper working conditions for their members. But it doesn't have to be ugly. It doesn't have to be, be um, violent. It doesn't have to get to the place where, where um, it, it results in these, these uh, unchrist-like activities. One of the things that I think we ought to bring into this discussion as we close off is that wherever we have labor unions and, or an active lab, labor movement, we should have an industrial dispute tribunal. Some have a specialized court system that um, can not just do mediation, but help to resolve um, disputes. When you have a gridlock, when management is saying no, and the union says yes, before it gets violent, we should have a dispute resolution tribunal somewhere. All right. Pastor, Pastor Isaac, I want you to comment on the following statements as we continue again from E.G. White. Unionism, Pastor Gordon, you can give your, 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 your two pens as well. Unionism has revealed what it is by the spirit that it has manifested. It is controlled by the cruel power of Satan. Those who refuse to join the union, the unions formed, are made to feel this, made to feel this power. The principles governing the forming of these unions seem innocent, but men have to pledge themselves to serve the interests of these unions or else they may have to pay the penalty of refusal with their lives. And this comes from Manuscript Release, um, Volume 4, page 75. Yeah, um, well, we, we've seen that, Pastor. Um, all in my work life, I, I taught for two years, and it was during that time there were some really strong negotiations and that kind of stuff. Um, the school where I taught, it was a principle, you know, the seven events, you don't take part in union that kind of demonstration and that kind of thing. And, um, but there are persons who felt they should. Um, and, and you come into school, it's like you're not with the program. You should not show up. And, and you feel it, you, you felt the venom, you know, to please whom. And I please Christ, Pastor. I don't please no union leader. I mm -hmm. please Christ. So, of course, I wouldn't participate. But so, so, so um, I, I'm agreeing with this. And very often, we see the demonic, devilish spirit coming from these leaders. We see it. We watch them on TV and we wonder what has happened to them. Mm -hmm. Where is good sense and good judgment? Mm -hmm. It has vanished. Um, because Christ does not, Christ is not uppermost in their minds, mm -hmm. right? Um, whatever is under the table, that's what, that's what they, and they have motive that drives them. And as a Christian, you have to be careful because, I mean, those folks, if you give credence to that, it means that they're acting on your behalf and, 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 and really, in fact, I had one um, fellow teacher who said to me, well, you don't want to take part? 
when we get the increase, you must um, you mustn't mustn't accept it. Mm -hmm. You know um, that kind of statement. Well, mm -hmm. I'm working with the government of Grenada, and the government gave increase. I am entitled to it, so I don't have to go down with you and and demonstrate to get the increase because mm -hmm. the the government of Grenada is giving the increase. So that that was my view, and you know. So I'm just saying I agree with Elmay. Very often the spirit of Christ is not shown, so we have to be careful that we don't. We, we are not um, propping up persons who are going on their way down godly attitudes and on our behalf. All right. Yeah? W what about uh, my having a problem with management? And I'm going, and I go to my prayer group at church and say, pray with me, fast with me. I'm going to talk to my manager tomorrow. And I want God to soften his or her heart. Why, are we why have we become so sophisticated and modern that we think all our interest must be brought to the union to deal with it for us. There have been several cases where people have testified in churches where God worked for them. So it, we must not, as Christians, see ourselves merely as citizens of this world. We are truly citizens of heaven, and we must at times employ some strategies that may look old-fashioned and may underfall and archaic, but, but they work. Amen. So I'm just saying, don't think you must have a union to advocate for you. I must make it clear, I am not saying whether or not one should join a union. That's not where I'm going. I'm speaking theologically. I am saying that it is possible for you to get through and get successful with God's hand on your life without your need to participate in what is oftentimes an adversarial union. And so, as we come to the end of time, as we, not, not, I'm not speaking. <laughs> <laughs> well, this statement could apply Even the time to of the, the end or the end of time. The time of the end, right? <laughs> and um, I have one more, um, one more statement from LNG White I would like us to, um, to, to consider. But as we come to... Um, the, clo the closing of Earth's history. Sister White made a statement in relation to um, the trade union movements, right? And she said, in light, so in light of the following statement, how should we then respond to union activities? And this is the statement. Both gentlemen, you can give your take on it. Um, anyone can start for us, all right? The trade union will be one of the agencies that will bring upon this Earth a time of trouble such as has not been seen since the world began. Manuscript release, volume 4, page 88. Well, um, <laughs> this comes from Ellen White. I'm a believer in Ellen White, and therefore I believe that this is true. And it's not far-fetched. We can see how it can be true, because remember, the trade union deals with what is called organized labor. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you're already organizing, you know, um, you deal for, you you advocate on behalf of organized labor, then there, any matter there, it's easy to get out your your members and put pressure. You right, so um, Ellen White is saying we have to be careful, and Ellen White is um, is saying that um, this is an agency that the enemy will use. Yes, and therefore we have to be guarding in our you know, um, reaching out to the trade union leaders and trade union movement relative to that issue. Um, when there is matters to be dealt with, we do it, but not holistically having them in our corner because knowing that this, this same grouping or organization will be used to, to come against God's people um, when the appointed time has come. So I, we, we, have to be, we have to be mindful of our interaction with the trade union movement. I also um, want to commend Pastor um, again um, to say that the church is not perfect. I'm, I'm, relative, I'm saying that relative to statements that I make. And, you know, we cannot cherry pick. So an incident took place at that church or that organization and you'll say the church is bad. No. The things do happen, um, you know, and, but it's not, it doesn't make it right. So if someone, if someone wasn't treated well or properly in a situation, that's a situation that doesn't color the church. Correct. You know, um, I'm saying that not as workers of the church because sometimes we take one situation and we try to magnify it as though this is the general principle in all um, in all situations. I, I believe the church, um, led by God, we are human beings, but but in all fairness, I think efforts have been made to do the best. Um, but there are situations when when it, the best action may not have been taken, mm -hmm. and that should not color 
the church and his response to his workers. I just I thought I just wanted to say that. Amen. Pastor. Well, the, there is a certain trajectory that we're seeing with social institutions today. Social institutions continue to be unbiblical and intolerant and aggressive as time progresses. We are seeing that right now. And I am not alarmed, I'm not surprised that um, after the, the statement in Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, mm -hmm. page 88, I'm not surprised at it because the devil is using these institutions. And it means that more and more as time progresses, Christians will have to realize that the true judge of this earth, the one who gives justice, is Jesus Christ. And we have got to take our cases to him and stop depending like the secular man, like the man who doesn't know God, on the institutions to give you justice. Because to be honest with you, listeners, viewers, colleagues, there will come a time when not even the court systems in the land will give justice all the time. Mm -hmm. So we have to, as time progresses, depend on God. Prayer and fasting, getting together, that still works. So we, if, as we're told here, that trade unionism is going to be in the hand of the devil as time progresses, then God's people must have that kind of sensitization now to know how you're going to order your future in terms of which institution you're going to depend on to advocate for you. Is it going to be your prayer warriors or is it going to be some social institution? And I would say that we'll depend on the former because this is a bad forecast. All right. Thank you very much. You know, viewers, a lot has been said. I mean, I saw a lot of comments in the chat and I am very happy that we had those comments um, in the chat. Um, I appreciate them. We thank you for making your submissions and so forth. Um, we thank you, the viewers who took the time off to just be a part of this discussion that we had today in relations to the Christian and the labor union. And of course, um, we, we may not have been able to t cover every aspect of, of it, but we do hope that the discussion that was um, held here today would have been one that would help us in our approach when it comes to dealing um, with labor union and labor related um, issues and so forth. Now, having said that, um, of course, we all know as Pastor um, Gordon would have ended so beautifully. Our greatest stronghold is when we get on our knees and talk to our Father, Jesus, and he responds to the prayers of his children who pray in faith. And so even when human hands may fail us, we still have God. And as a matter of fact, our first approach should be to go to God first, right, and then anything else may come after. So I'm just saying all of this to say when we, when we are faced with issues that we may be thinking about um, the labor union and all the different avenues to help resolve it, don't forget that your first approach should be that of going to Almighty God. And having said that, I just want to extend heartfelt thanks to all of your viewers who took the time to view with us. I extend thanks to Pastor Enoch Isaac and Pastor Jerome Gordon for taking the time out of your busy days to be here, your busy day rather, to be here um, to share um, some of the wisdom and knowledge that God would have blessed you with in relation to this matter. Um, at this moment, I would invite um, Pastor Enoch, can you do a closing prayer for us as we sign off? on this episode of Pastor's Corner. Sure, let's pray. Father, we thank you for allowing us to conclude yet another Pastor's Corner as we dealt with the issue of the Christian and his or her relationship to labor unions. We thank you for the information shared. And Father, we pray that all our viewers and listeners will take heed um, and be led by your spirit as to how far we should go what we should do, and how we should conduct ourselves relative to labor unions. Bless your people, and may we keep our, um, our hearts fixed upon heaven, not upon this world, knowing that indeed you are the one that will fight our cause in every instant. Thank you, Father, for hearing and answering this prayer. Dismiss us now with your blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.